Hello and welcome back to part two of Voyages. It's Mrs Forrest here again. Can you remember what happened to Amira and Kai at the beginning of the story? They were both very nervous about their first day at Fram. Amira was worried that her English wouldn't be good enough and Kai was worried that he'd have to tell people about his dyslexia and he wasn't sure how they would react. If you remember, the first part of the story ended with them bumping into each other, literally. So let's find out what happens next. Chapter five, Amira. I was sitting in a small room with a frosted glass door, looking at my shaking hands and contemplating the events that had occurred just minutes ago. My new and now dirty school bag lay on the floor beside my feet and a tear-stained tissues lay on the table. How could I have got myself into trouble on my first day at school? In fact, even before the first day had started, this was a catastrophe. Would I be able to show myself here again? Of course not. I'd need to find a new school and start all over again. This was my first time in trouble in my whole life. I'd never had a detention I had to copy up my work neatly and now Miss Lawrence the head of year seven was phoning my dad to have a quick chat my mouth went dry at the thought of dad's disappointment in me from the next room I could hear her voice murmuring quietly followed by a laugh what did that mean thoughts raced through my mind at that moment out of the corner of my eye I saw her approach the glass door and turn the handle it looks like someone has fixed that cut on your knee, she said, entering the room. Does it still hurt? I shook my head vigorously to assure her I was all right. I didn't want to engage in conversation. This was the last few minutes I'd be spending in this building anyway. I phoned your dad and had a chat with him, she continued. So now my dad knows. And I've caused him to be disturbed at work. I hoped he wouldn't get told off or lose his job or anything. I've told him that we fixed you up after your accident and that you're going to be fine. He's keen for you to get into lessons as soon as possible so that you don't miss too much of your first day. How do you feel about that? Lessons? Does this mean they're not going to tell me off or send me home? Lessons, I said. Oh, how ridiculous. This was my first conversation I'd ever had with this teacher and I couldn't even speak in full sentences. Yes, you, you've got some time with your tutor first to help you get all settled in. You've got about 30 minutes left of that. And then you've got geography. Your tutor's name is Mr Fennick and he's looking forward to meeting you. She seemed very calm about the whole thing. So I don't get told off, I managed to say. My voice cracked and I knew it sounded like I was going to cry. But as well as the diminishing worry, I was excited to meet Mr Fennick. No, of course not. It was an accident. I'd like to know why you were so upset so that I can help you. But the best thing really is to get stuck into your first day as quickly as you can. A sense of relief washed over me. I felt the cut of my knee begin to hurt. I got worried because I don't speak English very well. If I think I panicked. I tried to explain. But I don't want to miss my lessons. I said, hearing my voice become stronger. Can I go to class? As long as you come back at lunchtime so we can have a proper chat about why you were upset. Is that a deal? Yes, I nodded. And can I say sorry to the boy? He's waiting for you outside. In fact, you're in the same tutored group. So I'll introduce you both and then I'll take you around to Mr Fennick. Thank you. This teacher reminded me of the kind of things my dad said when I had a problem. The thought made me want to start to cry again, but I pushed it away. I made a plan to tell Miss Lawrence about how I got to England. I would tell her when I came back at lunchtime. Chapter six, Kai. Miss Lawrence brought the girl out into the quiet, spacious corridor where I was sitting, thinking. This time, I had the prop opportunity to take a proper look at her. She was definitely small for year seven, and she looked awkward in a school uniform and rucksack, like she wasn't used to dressing in this way. Her face was a strange mixture of timidity and relief. It was as if she believed she had just been let off an awful punishment. I felt like that when I was responsible for killing the class hamster in year five. 
Kai's piece of advice number five, don't run through the classroom with a compass and your lace is undone. But that's another story. This is a mirror, said Miss Lawrence. I think you have something in common. You're both very good at running. I smiled at a mirror to show no hard feelings. And we started walking behind Miss Lawrence to our tutor room. She was talking away to fill the awkward silence, I guess. But I didn't listen and instead looked around at my new school. It seemed totally different to the open evening. I remember going around with my parents and an over-talkative year eight student who was keen to make a good impression. That night we'd hardly seen anything properly because there were so many other parents and kids wandering around too, looking slightly confused. It seemed like a lifetime ago. Today, the corridors were as hollow as the inside of a ghost and every classroom we passed looked quite quiet. I caught glimpses of students talking or working, giving out books, laughing, smiling, writing the names on the front of things. Every door was like a snapshot of another life, the life that I'll have as I grow older in this place. No matter what my cousin said, it didn't seem much like a prison to me. I saw posters with diagrams of experiments and pictures of Shakespeare, of different places in the world and trips that the students had been on. I started to feel excited about everything that I was going to do over the next few years. And here we are, announced Miss Lawrence, coming to a standstill outside a maths classroom with Mr Fenwick's name stuck on the door, beside a picture of Doctor Who. The fourth Doctor, Tom Baker, I noted with interest. As Miss Lawrence was about to open the door and usher us in, I remembered I had to tell her something, but I needed a moment to pluck up the courage. My mouth went dry and I started to hear my heart pounding again. Dry mouth, teary eyes. Surely she would notice how I was feeling. Miss Lawrence, I managed to whisper. She and Amira turned to look at me. I looked at my shoes, noticing the scuff marks that had been left there from my meeting with the bush. I thought about the look of disappointment I sometimes saw on new teachers' faces when it was clear that reading in front of the class was not for me. I thought about the panic which rose in my stomach when I knew I was going to have to read with a partner and then they would know. I thought about the mess I'd made of a presentation in front of a visitor in year six when I couldn't get my words in the right order. But I would have to tell her, and it might as well be now. Miss Lawrence, I repeated, I need to tell you that I'm dyslexic. I paused, I waited, I watched. But the world didn't end, the ceiling didn't collapse. Miss Lawrence didn't even seem to react. Instead, she looked at me knowingly. I know, Kai. We've got all your files from the primary school and everyone who needs to know has been told. You don't need to worry about that because all the things get properly started. We'll give you the help you need. Do you need an overlay? Yes, I've got a green one in my bag. Then don't be embarrassed to use it. Have a good day now and we'll catch up at some point later in the week, OK? OK. The door swung open and Mr Fenwick turned around. I'd never seen anyone like him in my life before. He must have been as tall as Mount Everest, with a huge ginger beard spreading like a forest around the foothills of his chin. And his mouth's voice was loud and booming. Ah, our new recruits, he boomed and laughed. Come and sit down. We're just getting to grips with our timetables. We stepped in and I felt like the day had really begun. Chapter 7, Amira. Mr Fenwick was like no teacher I'd ever had before. Despite the calm and kind look on his face, he had an aura which told you to behave and he towered over each and every student. As I sat down beside Kai, he handed us our timetables. A sigh of relief escaped my lips as I realised that after we finished in tutor time, I would have geography, maths, lunch, history and back to tutor time. That was all OK. Those were subjects I had studied before at home. I looked sideways at Kai and saw that his face had gone completely white, much whiter than it had been when Miss Lawrence pulled him out of the bush. He was staring at his timetable like he'd seen a ghost. Are you OK? I whispered to him. 
No. He shook his head and I saw tears appearing at the corners of his eyes. What's wrong? I asked. There was a low buzz of chatting in the room, but I was worried he would be embarrassed. I can't understand this. The letters are jumping around the page, he replied. I pulled the paper so that it was between us and I pointed to today. Just focus on today. Don't look at the whole thing yet. As I said it, I thought about the things my dad had said to me as we were walking to get into Europe. I'd asked how he knew our food was going to last for the journey or how he knew we could cross the border or what would happen if we injured ourselves. He told me to concentrate on one thing at a time. You've got almost the same as me. We're in the same maths class there. And then we go to French together. Mr Fenwick had put some highlighters on our desk and I started to colour code the boxes. Kai looked relieved, but only for a moment. The next thing I knew, the expression on Kai's face had transformed into one of absolute horror. His eyes were transfixed on Mr Fenwick's desk and his cheeks were flushed the colour of fresh tomatoes. I followed his gaze to where Mr Fenwick's computer in a pile of paper sat neatly, waiting for the term to start. And then I saw the problem. Sitting happily on the computer keyboard, sniffing at the keys, was a small ginger and black rodent. Bubble! whispered Kai, horrified. Mr Fenwick started walking back to the front of the room. Everything seemed to go into slow motion again. Other students in the front row had seen Bubble and had fallen silent. Gradually, this uncanny quietness fell over the whole class. But still, Mr Fenwick didn't seem to realise. Kai opened his mouth to speak, but no sound came out. Mr Fenwick turned around to sit on his desk and address the class. Bubble looked up at Mr Fenwick's mountainous body. Kai looked at Bubble. I looked at Kai, then back to the desk. It was at that moment that everything froze. I saw that Bubble was sitting comfortably on a ruler. The ruler was lying along the desk on the keyboard, as if waiting for this very moment. Unaware, Mr Fenwick lowered himself down a near lethal action with a consequence we all bore witness to. And oh, what a sight! What a moment this was. Mr Fenwick's sudden weight on the other end of the ruler flung Bubble, now a shrieking ball of fur, across the room like a bullet from a gun. Bubble's legs stretched out like a parachute and his face was a testament to his fulfilment, his utter joy. Emancipated from Kai's pocket, he was free to fly at last. Every face in the classroom turned to follow Bubble's flight path. And then we saw the next disaster heading quickly our way. At the back of the classroom, a boy was gazing up at Bubble's fluffy body as he continued his maiden flight. All of us were stuck to our seats as if with superglue, except Mr Fenwick, who energetically sprang forward a mere millisecond too late. As his gigantic foot pounded on the floor of the classroom, Bubble started his descent. The boy was still looking up. Move! shouted Mr Fenwick. Chapter 8. Kai. Kai's piece of advice, number 6. Don't bring your pet guinea pig to school. Twice on the first day I'd ended up in Miss Lawrence's office. Right now I'm sitting holding Bubble in my hands, waiting for Mum to collect him. I'd been in tutor time looking at my timetable with a mirror when we'd looked up and saw Bubble sitting on a ruler on Mr Fenwick's computer keyboard. And when Mr Fenwick sat down on his desk, he had accidentally propelled Bubble across the classroom with such force that it smacked Ben right in the face. After that, everything was chaos. Mr Fenwick boomed across the room, telling us all to be calm and stay in our seats. If there was a rat in the room, he'd deal with it. He's not a rat, I yelled as I jumped out of my seat and raced across the room to save Bubble. The other students screamed and pulled their legs up onto their chairs, leaving Mr Fenwick and I to rush around looking for Bubble. Fortunately, I found him first. I grabbed him and held him tightly, feeling his legs squirming angrily in my hands. Well done, boomed Mr Fenwick. We've never had a rat here before. Pass him over and I'll dispose of him. No, he's my guinea pig, I replied, panicking. And so I wound up here with Miss Lawrence. Actually, 
Things have worked out pretty well. I've made a new friend. Ben found the situation funny, and he's told me that he loves animals. Miss Lawrence wasn't particularly angry with me. She just said that I shouldn't bring pets to school. I think I saw a glimmer of a giggle on her face when she talked to me about it. Then, when she phoned Mum to ask her to collect bubble, all Mum did was sigh. <sighs> At least she didn't hit the roof. So, not been the best start. But what I've learned is that even though I'm clearly going to make mistakes, it will actually be okay. Things that I've achieved today. I succeeded in starting my new school. I made new friends. I spoke to a teacher about my dyslexia and she reassured me. I was able to read my timetable with my friend's help. I rescued my pet guinea pig. There was a sudden burst of noise outside the window and I realised that it must be break time now. I've done all of these things and it's only 10.30am. I hope mum gets here soon to collect bubble because I can't wait to get to geography and start the day properly. Hopefully this time I'll be able to get through a lesson without disaster. Kai's piece of advice number seven. On your first day of school, chill out and just do your best. That's enough. Right. Mum's here now with a cage for bubble. And Miss Lawrence is telling me I'd better go get something to eat for break. I hope the dining hall is easy to find. Here I go. Well, I hope your first day of Fram isn't quite as eventful as Amira's and Kai's. And it's definitely not a good idea to bring your pets to school, so don't try that. Did you notice in the story that Kai was worried about his dyslexia? If there's anything like that that's worrying you, then you can stop worrying right now. Just like in Kai's case, the teachers will know who needs a bit of extra help. And that's nothing to be embarrassed about. As well as all of your teachers, there's the adults in the Achievement Centre are here to help you. And if there's anything that you need, you just have to ask. Now, at the back of the Voyagers booklet, you'll see there's some tasks for you to do over the summer holidays. <clears throat> just want to talk you through some of the different things that there are to do. So, first of all, we want to find out a little bit about you, okay? Because everybody's different, everyone's special. So, first task is to write a little bit about yourself. The other thing is, you'll have been given a copy of this book, The Super Miraculous Journey of Freddie Yates. Now, it's a fairly new book, it was just published this year, and I haven't come across it before, but I made the mistake of starting to read it last night. Mm. Probably not a good idea to start reading a really good book at bedtime got to confess I was up really really late reading it and then as soon as I woke up this morning I had to read a little bit more I haven't quite finished it but I'm really enjoying it. it's a great book and uh, I suppose there's a few similarities between the kind of things that Kai got up to in school and the things that Freddie and his friends get up to they seem to get into a few scrapes and a few bit of bother together um, but anyway you've got that book to read so I do hope you enjoy that so you then asked her what is it that about that book that you particularly like? What was the favourite event? And we ask you to um, draw a picture of that. Thinking about other sort of films or, or DVDs that you watch over the summer, um, you can tell us a little bit about that as well. Imagine you meet me a fictional character. Now, a fictional character can be any story from any book that you've read. It might be one that you've read at primary school, one that you've read at home. Um, doesn't matter. It might be a book of your own, book that you borrowed from the library. But tell us a little bit about um, if you want, if you could meet a fictional character, who would you choose? Would you choose the hero or would you choose the villain? And then tell us a little bit about any other books that you've read about over the summer holidays. The thing to remember is that when you bring this booklet back to school in September, there'll be prizes um, for the best contribution. So it's really worth having a go at doing this. And then another task is to redesign the cover of the super miraculous journey of Freddie Yates. So thinking of once you've read the book, thinking about all the different things that Freddie and his friends get up to. Could you come up with a different um, front cover picture than the one that the, um, the author's chosen? Kai mentioned that he quite likes comics and uh, he talked about some of his favourites sort of wanting to curl up with his comic books. Do you read comics and magazines? And if you do, tell us a little bit about that as well. It doesn't really matter what you read as long as you are reading. 
And then this, this is something, as I said to you in the last video, I'm fairly new to the school and I didn't know you could do this, but this is incredible that like you can actually have a look to find out what's in this library at Fran from home. I didn't even know you could do that. So if you want to have a look and uh, see what books we've already got and are there any new books that you think we need to add to the collection. And then finally, what, who's your favourite author? Tell us a little bit about that. But most of all, what I really want you to do is enjoy, again, maybe having another look through the Voyager's booklet. Look at that information at the beginning because there's some useful bits of helpful advice there and enjoy reading about Freddie Yates as well. So that's the end of Voyages. I hope you've enjoyed the story. I hope you have a really great summer and I hope to see you at Fram in September. See you soon. Bye.